one, they don't control shit. It's just that simple. They are not in control. They are not in power. Somebody else is. They are following orders. It's just that simple. The same way you have our celebrities here in America, black, rich billionaires like Oprah and others who don't put money back in the black community, that movie, the same way you compose that to Africa and you know what was going on in uh, the movie, you can put to these celebrities. Just that simple. Where's Oprah? Where's Jay-Z? Where's Russell Simmons? Where's P. Diddy? Why aren't they in the black community doing basically what they're trying to convey to you in the Black Panther movie? Where are they at? What's holding them back? Same thing holding them back. It's holding back the people in Africa. It's just that simple. They're being told not to do. They're being warned not to do. And they don't do it because they care about themselves. They don't care about everybody else. And this is why I told you guys, personal economics. Why you got to go out and get it yourself because you're not going to get it from a fictional movie or this system. It's not going to give it to you. So you need to go take it. You want it? Go get it. Understand how to do it. Understand how to put yourself in a position to get it and grow successfully on your own and not be waiting for somebody to come and save you. So the whole narrative of, you know, extraterrestrials given vibranium or what have you and Africans just hoarding their information and the technology for themselves is kind of sort of a pop shot at ancient Kemet except for we are the extraterrestrials this is our information that was stolen from us it's a pop shot at so much I'm not even gonna really dig too much in the movie because I've seen so much in it that really pissed me off that was real pop shots at us that you know we was cheering for and a lot of people just did not get and you know uh, on the flip side, you know, the movie had a lot of great, you know, um, outright showings as far as the look for African people and, uh, you know, just being in that position of power and, um, you know, having that technology and, you know, seeing finally in a movie, you know, the black girl, black woman scientist. She, she's the smart guy, you know, the smart woman, and she knows what to do when she created this and did that. Seeing us in these roles of power, no weave and no bullshit, and just having that sort of unity and having this whole huge, you know, uh, land of this technologically advanced and being in these positions of power, it's amazing to see. And for that part, you know, I applaud them. I don't really give two shits about black director or what have you because the producer is basically the president of Marvel anyway. And he was there watching his ass, of course. So you take that with a grain of salt and you understand what that's really about. But, um, you know, as far as the look, they, they did it just as in a few ways. But when you understand the, you know, underline of what it's saying, we can pose that to so many different things. A lot of those questions, a lot of the things they was talking about, we can really look at and dig into. So, you know, for everybody that's putting their heart and their emotions and all this energy and time behind a Black Panther movie, where the fuck you been? You know, where you been if you ain't been here with us, you know, trying to wake people to fuck up now a movie and everybody's all woke. Everybody's all Wakanda. And I'm like, damn, I take a movie. You know what I'm saying? A fictional character to get people you know, to be black, to be African. You know what I'm saying? The Hebrews trying to flip the whole Black Panther movie to, to, to fit Hebrews. But they hate Africa. But, the, you know, look, look, how, how that's going to work out kind of in Africa. So it's crazy what people are doing and um, not really seeing uh, the underline and the, the many different avenues and aspects that you can get out of that movie and convey it to real life and um, ask questions because there's a lot that we need to look at. And economically, uh, Africa should be number one. Always, every year, all the time, every second, every millisecond, it should be number one in business, number one in finance and technology and everything else. Plain and simple. Because here you have nations pulling the resources from out of Africa, taking it back to their country, making, you know, billions, making new technology and new things that they could not make if they didn't get the resources from Africa. But we have scientists, we have the doctors, we have the people there who have the knowledge to do this stuff, but they don't have the money, they don't have the backing, and uh, they can't really put this stuff out. And if they could, they damn sure wouldn't let it fall into the hands of African people to control. So we got to pay attention to so much and understand that it's so much that African people should be at the forefront of, but are not because of colonization and because the hidden hand that controls the continent. Now, it's the same thing happening over there in Africa 
that's happening here in America with Congress. You have a lot of people in power that just, you know, turn a blind eye. They want to keep their job. They want to just go along and get along. And they like those paychecks and they like the positions of power they are in versus helping the people. And as long as they do that and keep their mouth shut, they'll be fine. And it's just people just accept that. And even more so in Africa, where a lot of people have just really no clue about what's really going on in the world and how it's important for us to really, um, you know, stay united, help each other as much as possible and really um, understand who's in power, who's taking over and what their agenda is and how they have affected us, you know, throughout the century. So it's a lot of corruption in Africa, a lot of these uh, African leaders letting people from other countries come in there and just basically rape them. And, you know, people are put to work and they, they, they worked hard. A lot of this stuff is not being talked about as well. And um, they're not getting, you know, their fair share uh, in many cases. So, again, when you get over there and you look at a lot of stuff that's going on, uh, you have, yeah, of course, in a lot of countries that have money to where uh, when the population is that much in favor of African people. There's only but so much you can get away with. So a lot of corporations do go over there and do set up shop and do have Africans working. But it's so much to the point where they have to be fair and they have to make sure that they uh, being uh, compensated and making good money for the work they're doing. So in a lot of cases, you have, you know, well off a good middle class of African people and wealthy African people in Africa doing well, doing, you know, big things. And, um, you have land you have access to major resources then you can go ahead and make a lot of money but at the end of the day in order for these african corporations and these companies to you know play ball to sit at the table and get their products out there anywhere else besides africa you know that's what they got to do they got to play ball they got to uh basically you know do what they're told and um uh, make sure they fit in with what everybody else is doing or else they might lose, you know, their seat or their head or, you know, their lives or what have you. So, you know, it's not so much that it's African leadership or African people not wanting to share resources or what have you with the rest of us or not wanting to reach out and create some kind of program to benefit African people, you know, coming back to Africa and helping. I know, I believe it was Ghana. Or Kenya that was throwing something like that to where you could come over there. Anybody from America, any African American come there and give you a job, a place to live, or what have you. And uh, instant citizenship, I think it was, you know, as a uh, payment for slavery. And um, it's it's not it's it's not it's almost as if they just don't know, you know, how important it is for us to take control of that continent and put it back in the hands of African people and to control it. So we got to look at um, who's in power in many of these countries. The fact that they want to keep the country divided is a major thing. And the fact that, you know, we don't have any uh, uh, support system outside um, of Africa to basically come to our aid in any country around the world if something does happen. You have different countries, have different militaries, and they are not nowhere near as uh, strong enough to compete and fight against any of these nations. And that's another thing. Um, so the situation is deeper than people realize. And if you can't protect what you have, then, you know, there it is. And that's the first thing that Africa will have to do after uniting uh, is create a large enough military to protect the resources and because you know these resources are in such primitive areas um and the weapons that is there is given by the u.s anyway we can't do nothing it's just that simple so again when you look back at the black panther movie and look at that point they want to raise and that kind of you know point they want to point out as far as the resources being in africa because that's basically what they're really saying africa got resources power can do things but it's not helping its people why it's not that they don't want to it's that they can't plain and simple so you can't go outside of the country and protect your people when you don't have the means to protect them just as simple we have seen the might north korea china russia germany france you know we know about these militaries and navies that a lot of these countries have 
Name the African Navy. The African Marines or Army. It's not united. What country are you talking about? Huh? And who's manufacturing the weapons? Who's building the planes and the tanks? Who has the navigation system and the satellites and the space program? Africa. So it's a lot more to it. So for a lot of people, I've gotten that question a couple times now about, you know, why is in Africa? Because, like I said, any sane person look at it, well, all these resources, you know, all this money come out of there. Why ain't they helping us? It's deeper than that. And, um, you know, Gaddafi understood it. Uh, a lot of African leaders understood it that was assassinated and have been killed and wiped out because it's a dangerous thought uh, for them to have as far as the unity of Africa and what it can mean for uh, the colonizers economically, you know, it definitely benefit the Africans, so they don't want that. And it's a lot more to look into instead of just thinking that uh, they're just not helping when the fact is they can't. So as I said, they basically got us a long time ago. They got the Africans a long time ago with instilling religion. These religious beliefs is basically at the forefront of what of what's keeping the unity from happening. What's really truly separating the continent, you know, all those countries, is the religion and the people being bamboozled and, and, and led into, you know, stupid ideologies and not really understanding, not even their own culture and their own history and the power and, and, and what they can do as far as, you know, using the resources that's beneath their feet. And um, it's crazy. Even if they knew what was there, they don't have the understanding to grow it economically and, you know, make it boom. So a lot of them allow and welcome in the Europeans to help them with that. And then they end up, you know, with nothing. So, um, you know, and looking at the whole thing and understanding the situation. And, you know, it's not really too much we can do. And it's just a, one of those cases where, you know, we can't let it go. But what can we do? You know, what can we really do as far as just put the information out and get people to understand uh, what's really going on and how they need to change their thinking over there in Africa and to, you know, encourage people to go more into positions of power, you know, to form groups and not be scared to challenge authority over there and, and question leadership and what they're doing as far as using the resources that belong to everybody in the country, giving it away to Europeans and, you know. A lot of people from Asia, a lot of these uh, Chinese corporations and companies, it's like, you know, how can you allow that? You know, how can they, as a government structure that's supposed to be for the people and support the people, allow the resources to be taken out of the country somewhere else and not not have an economic return on all those resources that would benefit the people? This is what we're seeing. Africa feeds the world, plain and simple, and it's being raped and the people are not getting nothing to the point where they have to flee and leave and go to other places and they get so dug in and settled in they don't want to come back you know they don't want to come back and um it's crazy so you know we anybody that's conscious understands all this and what's going on and what has been taking place uh over the years and um how so many people have tried to do things to help and change the situation in africa but it's tough, you know, it's, it's these people can't get out their own way. Uh, it's tough to, to, to get them out of the Christianity, Islam state and to understand that they have been tricked and bamboozled with that. They are so clinging on the Europeans for, you know, movement into the future because they have seen that, you know, the country have, has developed so far, so far, so fast under European rule that they are willing to let them take over. Then it's not, you know, just that we got to go through the whole, you know, European colonization. Then you have the Arabs coming in there, you know, the Saudis or what have you coming in, coming in there along with the Asians coming in there. And just now we have to deal with so many different civilizations and, you know, it's not really nothing left for African people, but we still outnumber them, you know, immensely. So with, knowledge and education 
uh, with getting these people to change their thinking and uh, the way they let these people into the countries. And I see it's changing. This is one quick example with South Africa. We see, we'll see what happen, happens with that. But to get these people to knowledge and understanding that their country is valuable, it belongs to us, we should control every single ounce, every mineral, every ounce of oil, every you know drop of gold and diamonds and every precious metal that comes out of there. We should have control of it and reap a huge benefit of it, you know, if we're going to export it, plain and simple. So them one, not using those resources to benefit the people. That's crazy because they don't have the know how. But two, allowing this these resources to be taken out and uh, make these Europeans, you know, crazy money is, is something that has to stop. So hopefully with education and with time, they begin to open their eyes and see. And I hope, you know, a lot of African people, which I did see online, a lot of them saw Black Panther, a lot of them watched. And that, that question has to be in their head. Like, you know, what do you, I mean, one, some of them probably thinking like, what do you mean? We don't have nothing here. <laughs> some of them might not even understand it, but a lot of them do. And they see what it's really talking about as far as, you know, we have in that hub the motherland, Africa, as a place that we can return to, a place that should give back to us and help us in our time of need, but has set by and watched the struggle. You know, it's going through what it's going through. And um, it has it's not nothing new. It has been going on for a long time. And a lot of people are just turning into it just because of the Black Panther movement and starting to look at what has taken place. The whole thing happened with the uh, so-called slaves, and I touched on that. The uh, slave slavery that's supposedly going on with the Syrians and everything, which is crazy. Talked about this in my first uh, video on Islam, how this has been going on for a long time. It's not nothing new. And um, a lot of people, again, just look down at Africa and don't understand the importance of it. And that if it wasn't so important, we wouldn't see all these attacks on it. The fact that these Europeans are in there and this is how they're making crazy money. The fact that you have all these new religions popping up and these Hebrews and everything else is popping up. Trying to get us to turn away from Africa. But this movie has, you know, done its job and opened a lot of people's eyes to what's going on. And uh, for, for that, uh, you know, definitely thankful for the Black Panther movie and that aspect of waking up African people, black people everywhere into having, you know, more interest in the continent and all the countries within it so you know we'll see what happens but i want to thank you guys for taking the time to watch uh thanks for supporting as i said part two of meditation is out part three of personal economics is out definitely take advantage of the deal now 35 uh digital dvds take advantage of it before it's gone thank you guys for watching a lot more videos to come see you guys next video